what's up everyone welcome back to the channel so i saw this article uh a while ago and uh didn't get the chance to react to it but i feel like it's much more relevant especially with the kenya national basketball playoffs kicking off and looking at even the teams that are going to win what might might uh transpire in the near future so without further ado let's just let me just get into it so this is an article by citizen digital uh, so citizen mainstream media so they're doing a year in review so kenyan basketball clubs struggled to impress in international competitions i feel like this is a this is actually a common occurrence that i've seen where majority of the the top teams in the kenya national the kenya basketball playoffs kenya national basketball league they tend to struggle in international competitions and um let's just get into the article so courtesy of finishing first runners up in the 2022 zone 5 women's club championship kpa qualified for the fema fiba africa women's club championships held in maputo mozambique so kpa they went in zone 5 just to get some context kpa went to zone 5 they finished runners up against a sporting which uh, enabled them to participate in the Africa Women's Cup and uh, they didn't fare well, they got knocked off in the quarterfinals funny enough by the team that they got beat, they lost to in the finals so um, yeah, club uh, Alexander Sporting hailing from Egypt just has KPS number and KPS has never been able to uh, recover from that so they finished with a record of 3 and 4 so 3 wins four losses in a seven game span so i'm not gonna get too much detail in the article because uh we all know the madness that happened in their uh kpa uh they put their best foot forward in zone five they weren't able to win it they put their best foot forward in the in the africa women's cup they, it didn't it didn't work out so i mean even with their recent you know even with their acquisitions they're not able to like get over that hump so i can say it was just tough it was just a tough outing so the reason for me just pulling up this article quickly is the comments that i saw the coach the kpm men's coach just you know uh, mentioned mentioned i covered in detail what happened with uh, this whole situation even the men's uh 2023 ball qualifiers we know they lost four straight and they got knocked out in the road to Baal so I'm not gonna get too much detail in the article so the much uh, the, the important part I want to just mention here is the is what the KP head coach Sam Kiki uh, explained uh, why it has become difficult for Kenyan clubs to impress in Baal competition since its inception so uh, he was quoted as saying it was a good experience and exposure for our team. Our opponents were more experienced and had high standards as they have played in the ball competition since it started. The teams we meet are more professional teams. They are always together. They have their players on a contract which gives them room to always train and play together. So with this kind of organization, they are well motivated unlike us. We have, however, learned a lot and you're going to work hard to retain the local league so that you can represent in the con the country again in 2023 so that's what the coach said and funny enough it, it was just crazy and even that was on the men's side but on the women's side you could even see um uh the equity head coach david minor feels the kenyan leagues is a little weaker compared to some of the opponents leagues in africa so we just made some bad decisions during zone 5 championship however locally we must have a competitive league and teams that can compete at that high level currently we only have about three teams that are competing at a high level but the rest are just there so when players know that they are playing weaker teams they don't put in much effort even during training unlike when they are facing tough teams we therefore need more competitive teams in the Premier League so coach Miner said at the same time the soft spoken tactician raised concerned raised concerns over many breaks in the Kenya League so 
the organization of our league is a big concern because we play one game and stay for five weeks without playing. This is not acceptable. When you go to international assignments, you play like five or six games in a period of seven days and you're not able to do that. And and you're not used to do you're not used to that. It has it has to start locally here. Have as many games as possible within a short duration. So minor added. So you could see equity they didn't they didn't perform any better in zone five as they they performed poorly in their KPA, they finished runners up. So you could see the same sentiment is echoed. These top teams, the quote unquote top teams in the country, uh let's say KPA, equity, can even put ZTEC in there. You could see like uh, they're in, stuck in the middle. They're stuck in like a, in like that tier. They they are better than the teams that they're better than the local teams. But when they go to continental basketball, with reference to KP and Equity, they they are the worst team. And this is can this can be attributed to the fact that um, I saw a situation where KP have the ability to get any any player they want. Um, this Thursday, we there was a space that uh, I was a part of. We just discussing um, basketball, and something that uh, caught my attention I had was the fact that you're having a team like you know KPA. They have the ability to sign any player. They sign the best players. There's one thing to um, aggregate top talent, but there's another thing to make them all work and be able to like work together like a well old machine so unfortunately KPA know how to acquire talent but they don't know how to hone that talent why is it that you get getting you're getting a player that uh, is average uh, averaging about 17 20 points per game but when you bring to that player to that team they're relegated to the bench or they even average six points per game so you're seeing they don't know how to utilize the personnel that they have and this is not even a fault on the players I would put the fault and the blame on the coaching staff. The coaching staff is inadequate. And if you ask me, even the, the guys who are signing the checks in these big teams, what they should have done is get rid of the officials, not even the, not even the officials, the guys, uh, the team managers, they would get rid of them, get people who actually know how to set up these teams for success, not only inside our borders, but also outside in in the in the continent, especially continental basketball, because it's sad to see uh, a coach not having the ability to make adjustments in there. They're not used to uh, playing basketball at that level, or if they're going to uh, retain those coaches, retain those team managers, when they're going outside, they should contract someone else to do that coaching and you know uh, have a good technical bench in there. Because you're seeing a situation where the teams are not able to match up. Uh, statistically they are they are not able to like um they're not able to know like what they're supposed to do they don't even have the ability to you know uh, make their in-game adjustments so that they can be able to win that ball game so as uh, even if uh, these playoffs pan out the way they're going to pan out and uh, you have a champion that's going to be crowned eventually they're just going to be run through the same uh, meat grinder and you're just going to churn out the same performance that we saw and honestly, I just know it's going to be either KP or Equity on both sides, the men and women's side. But if we just continue with the same uh, mindset and mentality, we're just going to get the same result that we have, we have seen even according to this article, what happened last year. So uh, this is not even to, you know, talking bad about, you know, uh, Kenyan basketball. A majority of people keep coming here to this channel and they come up with the overall conclusion that uh, there's so much negativity around me just talking about Kenyan basketball but in, in, in actuality I'm just mentioning the actual facts and the brutal truth that not many people want to hear. We can sit here and you know lie to ourselves that uh, Kenyan basketball is headed to the right direction just because we're having good coverage and good production in there and you know talent is just being you know represented online and there's online uh, representation in there as people are able to put their highlights on there but the deep underlying issue is as much as you're being marketed in that way are the players 
changing the way they are playing are they advancing and how they are playing are the coaching staff uh utilizing uh new strategies to win basketball games are uh, are even the officials if, even even the people who are you know govern the governing body who are looking at the league are they putting in steps to make sure that the quality of basketball is palatable so that people can be able to rally around it so those are the things that uh people tend to ignore and in the end it comes back to bite us you having a situation where you have kp equity the top teams in the country when they go outside they are the worst teams they don't even they, they don't even look like uh strong teams you're having a situation where the women's team has beaten every single team in the women's division here in kenya but when they go outside they lose it doesn't matter like win the games when they matter when you look even at the kpa team they only lost one game in the regular season against um the Ann Wolfpack early in the season actually the second game but when they went outside they lost four straight in very game in games that have had very high implications even if they win the you know even if they go unbeaten here in that you know second leg you know even if they go unbeaten the whole playoffs when it matters can they have the ability to deliver those wins so those are the questions that um those are the things that you try to ask and they're pretty difficult questions that questions that uh have high implications but i don't think they're going to get answered because based on the way those teams have been moving we're just going to get the same uh result and um yeah i mean should we expect more from con- in continental basketball as far as uh, kenyan basketball teams are concerned i just feel like uh that's a question when you pose it i feel like the direct answer is we should just accept anything and lower our expectations because as much as people try to uh sugarcoat it and try to say that you know you're not supposed to be going hard on these people there's the problem there's the fault on the players there's the fault on you know the organizations and there's also the fault on the league because as much as you're depending on you just i just saw uh the way the coach was saying here about um the players not playing back to backs why don't you go and uh, go get those teams get, get those elite teams that are, are in the continent and request friend, friendlies with them because you have the ability to do it you have the money to do it why don't you go out there because you're seeing a situation where in continental basketball you're seeing a lot of teams making transactions especially uh to beef up their rosters what are, what is kenya doing kenya is just sitting there on the sidelines just waiting for things to happen and we're not even proactive enough then when we go out there and lose we start you know throwing out the sympathy card or oh, at least we tried at least we did this as much as we as uh, if we continue throwing the sympathy card other teams are getting better and the other teams are revving up and they're putting their players in 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 better positions to succeed right now the BAL is going on no Kenyan team is there right not even a Kenyan player not even a Kenyan coach has flown there to see what hap- what's going on they don't even know what's going on they can't even join even a technical bench in there to offer advice on how to win a basketball game that's where we are right now both the men's and women's side as much as these people keep saying that uh we 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 lost in in the BL what are these coaches doing what well, uh, nobody has even gone there to live and check those games i remember in that space we discussed it discussed a lot of things at length and that's one thing that i picked up that uh, really uh changed the way i looked at things because as much as um as much as there are people who are trying to you know uh, improve the sport we are seeing that there are other aspects and elements that are holding the sport back and and uh, honestly uh, as long as we continue the same trajectory we're just going to continue the same way so um that's all i got and even you can see even from them they know that they are they are, they are flawed but what are the steps that they are trying to take let's say, for example keep your wins again do they have the ability to contend in ball i don't think so if let's say equity and equity do must go and in, in, in go ahead and win ball can we expect anything different no they're just going to be in the same way because the, the the level of seriousness that they're taking the sport is not the same as the other people in the continent so it's about looking at, it's about looking uh, forward and knowing what we need to do so kenya is not there yet and unfortunately uh as much as we we want to you know uh part ourselves in the back that we are doing things well um 
we, we have a long way to go in terms of uh, continental contention so um yeah that's all i got for you guys so if you guys like the video make sure to leave your feedback down in the comments and what you think and um i'm out peace